let's start with a new topic from the chapter fluid dynamics so today we'll learn about the conservation of mass in fluid mechanics the nilor transport theorem establishes a relation between system rates of change and control volume surface and volume integrals but system derivatives are related to the basic law of mechanics eliminating system derivatives between the two gives the control volume or integral form of law of mechanics of fluid the dummy variable v becomes respectively mass linear momentum angular momentum and energy for conservation of mass the equation becomes dm upon dt in system is equal to 0 that means it is independent of the time that is can be written as d by dt multiplied by rho dv in the control volume plus integral of cs rho into velocity factor multiplied by n into da now this whole term can be written as net mass flux through the cross section it can be written as net mass flux through cross section this is a integral mass conservation law for a deformable control volume for a fixed control volume we have integral of del pa del rho upon del t multiplied by dv in the control volume plus rho into v into n multiplied by da and this is the integral along the cross section if the control volume has only a number of one dimensional inlets and outlets we can write del rho upon del t multiplied by dv in the control volume plus submission of rho av for the outlets minus submission of rho av for the inlets is equal to 0 other special cases occurs suppose that the flow within the control volume is steady then del p upon del t is equal to Zero. So equation becomes integral of rho multiplied by v into n multiplied by d a, and this complete thing is integrated through the cross section. This states in a steady flow, the mass flow entering and leaving the control volume must balance exactly. if further the inlets and outlets are one dimensional we have for steady flow submission of rho av for inlets is equal to submission of rho av for outlets the simple approximation is widely used in engineering analysis for example referring to the figure we see that if the flow in that control volume is steady the three outlet mass flux balance the two inlets that is outflow is equal to inflow now i can see at section 2 3 and 5 we are having the outlets while at section 1 and section 4 we are having the inlets that is there is an inflow so now this can be written as now we just learn that the outflow is been balanced by the inflow so submission of rho into a into v is for this is the term for outlet is equal to submission of rho into a into v and this is the term for inlet so we have rho1 a1 v1 plus rho4 a4 v4 as our inlets and rho2 a2 v2 plus Rho three A three V three plus Rho five A five V five as outlets. The quantity Rho A V is called the mass flow M passing through the one-dimensional cross section and has consistent units of kilograms per second for SI units. The above equation can be rewritten in the short form. That is, m two plus m three plus m five is equal to 
एम वन प्लस एम फोर नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर टर्म दट इज रो ए वी कैन बी रिटर्न एज द मास फ्लो इक्वल टू एम एंड इन जनरल द स्टेडी फ्लो मास कंजर्वेशन रिलेशन कैन बी रिटर्न एज सबमिशन ऑफ द मास गोइंग आउटवर्ड्स इज इक्वल टू सबमिशन ऑफ द मास कमिंग इनवर्ड्स if the inlets and outlets are not one dimensional one has to compute m by integration over the section so now this m for cross section is equal to integration of rho into v into n multiplied by da over the cross section where cs stands for the cross section and the cs is given for integration over here and here still further simplification is possible if the fluid is incompressible which may define as having density variations which are negligible in the mass conservation requirements as we know all liquids are nearly incompressible and gas flows can behave as if they were incompressible particularly if the gas velocity is less than about 30% of the speed of sound of gas again consider the fixed volume if the fluid is nearly incompressible del p upon del t is negligible and the volume integral may be neglected after which the density can be slipped outside the surface integral and divided out since it is non zero the result is a conservation law for incompressible flow whether steady or unsteady and this is nothing but integral along the cross section v into n multiplied by da and over here this rho is non zero the one which we have already used in the previous if the inlets and outlets are one dimensional we have submission of v multiplied by a for outward flow is equal to submission of v multiplied by a for the inward flow but we know discharge can be written as a multiplied by v that is area multiplied the velocity through which the flow is taking place so the discharge outwards is equal to the flow coming inwards where q is equal to va is called the volume flow passing through the given cross section again if consistency units are used q is equal to va will have units of cubic meter per second or cubic feet per second if the cross section is not one dimensional we have to integrate the discharge through the cross section so this becomes q c s is equal to integral of v into n for along the cross section the above equation allows us to define an average velocity v a v which when multiplied by the section area gives the correct volume flow that is now this becomes q is equal to a v so now this can be written as v is equal to q upon a so now 1 upon a and the value of q over here is integral of v multiplied by n da this could be called the volume average velocity if the density varies across the section we can define an average density in the same manner that is rho av is equal to 1 upon a integral of rho da but the mass flow would contain the product of density and velocity and the average product rho multiplied by v av would in general have a different value from the product of averages that is rho v average is equal to 1 upon a integral of rho v into n da which can be written as rho average multiplied by velocity average thank you